Hi there, and welcome to the course on the calculus of variations. In this video here, it's not mathematically precise. It's an introduction. It's something that really is a motivation to try and get us started and to have a nice and easy lead in. Okay, so what we're interested in is a problem. Now, the problem is that if we had a rope, and that's the rope in yellow, and the rope's hanging over a couple of pulleys, and that's the rest of the rope there, just lying on the ground. Then we know that if we were to take that rope down and then hang it back up again, it would hang in that exact same arc. Now the question is, how does the rope know that that's how it should hang? Why doesn't the rope pick some other shape to hang in, say along here like this? Now you could imagine coming along and grabbing each side of this rope, say that point there, and grabbing that point there, and pulling it down, in which case the rope would straighten out. So there would be less rope hanging down, and it would be just a, a, a much straighter uh, rope, kind of like a tight rope. Now you could have it the other way around about, you could grab this side of the rope here, and you could pull it down. But in both instances, if you were to let it go again, it would just drop back to this position. So we can say that this position here is an equilibrium position. So we are interested in finding out what is the equilibrium position? And we're interested in asking the question, why does the rope hang like this? Now, I'm actually going to give you the answer because I want to get started and want to get cracking on. And this isn't a physics course, it's a course in the calculus of variations. But we will describe things as best we can. So it turns out that it hangs in such a shape, such that it minimises the gravitational potential energy. Now, I've kind of, kind of pulled that out of the hat, and if you've not done any physics and you're not sure what gravitational potential energy is, you'll be sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute, I've just started this course and already I don't know what's happening. So, let's go ahead and we'll have a wee look at gravitational potential energy. Now, this is just not a... It's just a, a, an, an easy kind of intuitive derivation of it, okay? So you'll notice I've drawn a large foot here with a big toe. Now what we're going to do, um, we're going to imagine that energy is in some way related to how much it hurts whenever you drop an object onto your toe, okay? So you could generally equate these two things uh, just to give a, a, an indication of what we mean by our energy. So we take a mass m, at a particular height and we drop it onto your toe. Now it's going to hurt, okay? But if you were to take a much larger mass, well, is it going to hurt more or hurt less? Well, common sense tells us if we increase the mass, it's going to hurt more. So if you, you drop a one kilogram mass in your toe, it's going to hurt. You drop a 10 kilogram mass in your toe, it's going to really hurt. And a 100 kilogram mass is going to hurt bad. Now, what we're then saying then is that we could say that the the potential energy is in some way related to the mass. Now we know from common sense is if the mass goes up, the pain goes up. So we could say the potential energy is directly proportional to the mass. If the mass goes up, the potential energy goes up. The mass goes down, potential energy goes down. Now we also know that if we were to drop out from a certain height, it's going to hurt. But if we were to increase the height, it's going to hurt more. So we, equally, we could say the potential energy is going to be directly proportional to the height. As the height goes up, the potential energy goes up. Now, there's one other thing that you might not note here, but if we were, say, on the, we weren't on the Earth, but we were on the Moon, then if we were to drop that same mass from the same height on the, from the, on the Moon onto our toe, it wouldn't hurt so much, because the gravity on the Moon is less than the gravity on Earth. So we can say then that the, en the potential energy is directly proportional to the mass, it's directly proportional to the height, it's also directly proportional to the gravity. So we can then write that the potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. Now that's just a, a little heuristic derivation, okay? So don't take it too seriously, it's just a bit of fun so that we can get an indication of what we mean by gravitational potential energy. Now, let's imagine that we had the rope and it was sitting in this position here, so it's in an equilibrium position. 
by equilibrium position, we just mean that's the position that tends to take. So if I was to hang it back up, it would sit back in that position. In fact, the equilibrium position would be the position that minimizes the gravitational potential energy. So what we're seeing here is that there's a particular curve that the rope will sit in, and that curve will minimize the gravitational potential energy. So if I was to move this rope to any other curve, so for example, if I was to pull down on either side, and I was to have just a straight line along here, well, I'm saying that the potential energy of this position here is going to be greater than the potential energy here. Also, if I was to grab this internal piece of rope and pull it down, then there would be more rope hanging over, so there would be a greater mass hanging over. But the height would have decreased by a certain amount. So it means that there's this interplay between the height of each of these elements and also the mass that we have here as well. So it means that the energy potential that we're going to have, it, the, it's not really dependent on gravity. Gravity is going to be fixed, but it will be dependent on the height of each of the little elements. So imagine splitting this rope into little elements here, we've seen in pink. So that's one little element there. Well, you can see the length of this element here. The length of that element is shorter than the length of, say, that element there. So it means that the mass of this element here is greater than the mass of this element here, but the height of the element is going to be less than the height of the element up here. So we're going to have this interplay between the mass of an element and the height of an element. And we're going to try and work out how does the potential energy depend on that mass and on the height. Now that's what we're going to be going over in the next video. But the main thing to note here is that there's only one curve that will give a minimum for the potential energy. And in the next video, we're going to go and derive what that curve is. And we're going to see how exactly the mass and the height interact in order to give the value for that potential energy. So that's a nice, easy introduction. We'll go to the next video and we'll start deriving some of this using mathematics. Thank you and goodbye.